Hey YouTube, and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome, I'm glad to have you. In this video, we're going to cover crypto miner malware, or crypto jackers as they're more accurately called. We're gonna cover what they are, how they work, and most importantly, how you can remove them. So what these crypto miners are is a piece of malware like a virus that secretly sits on your computer and utilizes your system resources, whether it be your CPU, GPU, or even your bandwidth, to mine cryptocurrency for malicious actors. These nefarious bits of code are particularly annoying because they not only slow down your machine, but potentially add wear and tear to your hardware. They are particularly hard to remove due to them looking like legitimate software and having rootkit and bootkit capabilities. While not all crypto miners are the same, they do have a one singular objective, and that is to mine cryptocurrency for criminals. One of the most common legitimate crypto mining techniques is to invest in GPUs or graphics cards and use their fast processors and RAM to perform calculations for the crypto market. What crypto miner malware does is instead of utilizing the operator's own hardware, they secretly latch onto the computers of innocent and unaware victims and uses their hardware to mine crypto for themselves. If this seems unnerving, you're not alone. In November of 2022, Crypto miners were on the rise with a growth of more than 230%, and in 2023 and 2024, the growth was even higher. The number of victims of crypto miners exceeded the millions in 2024. The reports indicate that the majority of victims were installing applications through unverified sources or piracy websites. Obviously, this is high-risk activity, but another way to prevent this from happening in the future is to use a reliable antivirus. My recommendations can be found at the links in description. Now that we've covered how nasty these crypto miners can be, it's time to teach you how to remove these and free yourself from crypto miners. Now for this tutorial, we're going to need a few tools. We're going to need R-Kill, Malware Bytes, Hitman Pro, Rogue Killer, and Auto Runs. I'm going to show you where to get all of these and how to use them. Now first, you need to open your browser and you're going to go to the links in description. First, we're going to go to MajorGeeks.com for R-Kill. Why are we going to MajorGeeks.com? Because I'm gangsta! No, it's the real reason is, is they just have a lot of tools. It's one stop shop for many types of PC uh, tools, whether it's be security or enthusiasts. I also have the direct links here for the other tools, but we are going to get our kill here. So we're going to go ahead and download that. Now what our kill is, is an application that scans the background processes that are running. And if it finds malicious tasks, it will go ahead and kill them. This is very important because when the crypto miner is running on your system, it may interfere with the scans and removal. The next link that you'll find in the description is hitmanpro.com. We're gonna go ahead and download this product. We're gonna get the 30 day free trial. If you want to buy it, it is a great product. And we're gonna go ahead and download the 64 bit option. You don't need to download the 32 bit option unless you're on Windows 7 32 or before. If you're on a relatively recent machine, you're gonna be on 64 bit. So we'll go ahead and download that. And I'm gonna go ahead and save it the same place that I saved our kill, which is my downloads folder. And then after that, we're gonna go over to malwarebytes.com. Again, all the links I'm talking about are gonna be in the description. And then we're gonna click free download. And then save that. And then the fourth one is going to be Rogue Killer by Adlas Software. We're gonna go ahead and click download here. And what Rogue Killer is, is this is a scanner that is particularly good at finding fake software, software that is malicious or unwanted or even a crypto miner especially that is masquerading as a real application. It's often very difficult to detect applications or malicious applications that are pretending to be legit ones. So Rogue Killer is particularly good at detecting that specific type of malware. Now these 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 scanners, this our kill is not even a protection. This is a tool. But while these aren't my recommendations for everyday um, antivirus protection, they are good for this particular tutorial, just so that's clear. Now, my recommendation for everyday antivirus protection of your devices is ESET, which you can check out the link in description. It's been my recommendation for months now. I've made various videos about it on the channel. It has superior detection rates, 
protection, scanning, and features, and most of all, it has intrusion detection system and firewall for blocking hackers. Definitely recommend it. Again, you can check it out the link in description for the latest prices. Now, finally, after you've downloaded these four, we're gonna get one more. We're going to get Auto Runs from Microsoft. Again, link in the description. What Auto Runs is going to enable us to do is to check every part of the system, everything in the registry, and verify without a shadow of the doubt that we are in fact clean. So we're gonna go ahead and download this right here where it says download Auto Runs and Auto Runs SC. It's a very small file. And we're just going to extract it to a folder in the downloads here called Auto Runs. Okay, now that we've downloaded everything, we're gonna go ahead and go through all of these processes. So first you need to open up the folder where you downloaded all of the applications. In my case, it's my downloads folder. I have rkill, hitman pro, malwarebytes, rogue killer, and auto runs. The first application we're gonna run is rkill. Now, some of you guys may get an alert because you have a potato antivirus, no offense, but not all antivirus are the same. Some are a little silly and stupid and oversensitive because they're making up for their lack of, of technology. Um, for example, we can go ahead and put this into virus total and go ahead and put that there. Sure enough, ClamAV, Jingmin, Zilia, Google, MacSecure, uh, they say that it's malicious, but everyone else on this list says it's perfectly fine because these are potatoes. Um, and so it's not a virus. If you don't believe me, take your computer to a professional. Anyway, we're going to proceed. We're gonna go ahead and run our kill just by double clicking on it. And it's gonna look for background processes to stop. Here it says that I have no malware processes found to stop, but it terminated some background stuff just in case to make this scan a little bit better. All right, now that it's done, we can go ahead and close it. Now that the background applications and malicious applications have hopefully been uh, been given killed, we can go ahead and move on to Hitman Pro. So we're gonna go ahead and double click on this. Now Hitman Pro is very simple. All we gotta do to run this is click next. And then here it has two options. Do we want to install Hitman Pro on the system? This would be as if you're going to use it regularly. And if you only want to perform a one-time scan, so especially if this is just an incident response, you've been infected, you just need to run a clean, you don't need to have anything permanent, then you can just keep it at no here, which is what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna click next, and immediately it starts scanning the computer. No installation, this is totally portable. So all you gotta do is double click on it, and it does its job. It's scanning the computer, looking for any traces of malware on the system. And this is very effective at particularly detecting Trojans, rootkits, and crypto miners, which are often falling under this kind of category. It's finding all kinds of tracking cookies, anything that can be hurting privacy. It has found what it thinks is malware. It's not, but we'll let it do its thing. And it's just classifying all these files. Now, if you're not able to determine the difference between a false positive and a real positive, just let Hitman Pro do its thing. Worst case scenario is if it uninstalls one of your applications, just reinstall it, but you're in an incident response. You need your scanners to be extremely sensitive during this type of incident where you think you're infected with a crypto miner. So in my case, I know that's okay, but I'm gonna let it go ahead and do its thing. Okay, once it's done, you can go ahead and review the results. You're looking for malware and Trojan. I know these are okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click ignore, but in your case, if you're not a professional, you don't want to be going through and assuming things are false positive. Let, let, let Hitman Pro decide for you, and if the worst case scenario, you may have to reinstall an application, but you're most likely in an incident, you've been attacked, you're a victim of malware, let this scanner do its thing and just accept the results. We're gonna go ahead and click next. We're gonna move all of these trackers here. And in this case, it would also be removing malware detected. And then we are done. Gave the results. It only took one minute and 37 seconds. It's a relatively fast scan. Once we're done, we can go ahead and click close. Next thing, we are going to install Rogue Killer. Like I said, Rogue Killer is, what it does is it goes after rogues. Rogues are malicious applications masquerading as real applications, which is also how crypto miners keep themselves hidden. They want to stay hidden, they want to look legitimate so that you don't uninstall them because it's in the benefit of the malware actor, the hackers, the attackers, to have this running for as long as possible. It makes them money. Once this is finished, it should automatically open up. If it doesn't, just go down here to the bottom and double click on it and it should come up. 
All right, once you're here, all you have to do is ignore all this, go straight over to scan, and then right here, click full scan. And then just let this do its thing. This may take anywhere from five to 10 minutes, maybe longer if your system is really slow, just let it run its course, and then we'll go to the results. And once the scan has reached 100%, you'll see if you have detected items. If you have a crypto miner, 99% of the time, Rogue Killer will detect it and be able to remove it. I have a detection here, which is actually just a, uh, a registry entry because I have some privacy stuff enabled. But I'm gonna go ahead and add an exclusion because I know I manually did this registry entry and I know that Microsoft doesn't like it. But if you guys see some detections here, let Rogue Killer do its thing. It's not gonna break your computer. You're looking for malware, let it look for malware and let it do the removal. So once that's all done, go ahead and click removal right here. You can leave this by default where it was. I changed mine, just being that very clear. Removal and then done. Once you're done with this, you can go ahead and close it. You can also go ahead and uninstall Rogue Killer after it's over. You won't need it anymore. Last thing we're gonna need to do is malware bytes. And then we're gonna go ahead and click install. And then we choose this one here. We're gonna choose personal because this is just for a normal PC at home. It's not for corporate use. And we're gonna click next. And then we're going to skip this for now. We don't want to add the browser guard. Arguably, it is pretty good, but I have other browser protections already installed. But if you don't have an antivirus, maybe this would be good for you. It's not an antivirus product, but a lot of people like that uh, it has protections for your browsing. In my opinion, it's a little too sensitive and it blocks websites um, when it doesn't need to. But to each his own. I'm going to go ahead and skip it. And now it's just installing the Malwarebytes um, security suite. All right, and once it's done installing, we're gonna go ahead and click here to open Malwarebytes. And then we'll click here, get started. And then we're gonna click maybe later. If you'd like to buy it, go ahead. It's not really my recommendation for everyday protection, but it is a fantastic scanner respected by ITs for uh, over a decade now. We're gonna go ahead and start trial. Got it. Once it's installed, we're going to go over here to the scanner. We're not going to click the scan button. We're going to click the scanner here. And then we're going to click advanced scan. And then configure the scan. And then we're going to check this right here. Scan for root kits. You can leave everything else the same. The only reason we went into advanced is because we wanted to add to scan for root kits because a lot of crypto miners are hidden down at the system level, similar to the way rootkits are. And some of them are technically rootkits. You need to check the, any of the system drives that you have. I'm only gonna check my C drive in this case, but if you have secondary drives with applications installed on them, I recommend that you check them here, or you can check them all. Then we're gonna start a custom scan, and it's going to scan my system for anything malicious, whether it be malware, trojans, viruses, crypto miners, rootkits, you name it. And Malwarebytes is one of my preferred virus removal tools, not my preferred protection, um, not because they're not strong, but it's a bit heavy on system resources and ESET tends to be as good at protection and in some ways better and a lot lighter on my system. And a lot of you guys are just coming back from crypto miner attacks and you're gonna be free today. And I think you're gonna like having a lot of your system resources returned to you rather than hand it over to another antivirus. So that's the only reason I don't recommend Malwarebytes premium protection. I just like their scanner for removing viruses after the fact. Once the scan is complete, it'll show you any detections you have. It'll also give you this indicator here. I already put some viruses and malware on my computer on purpose so that it would get detected and it's all found it. So once it's here, you can go ahead and review if you want. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click quarantine to remove everything from the system that is infected. Once you're done, you may get an indication from Malwarebytes telling you that you need to reboot your system in order to complete the removal process. If you get that, go ahead and reboot your system, then come back here and we'll do the last step to give you complete peace of mind to verify without a shadow of a doubt that you are in fact clean. 
Now this last step is completely optional. Your computer is actually clean, but to give yourself peace of mind and to validate without a shadow of a doubt that your system is now clean, you can perform this step. We're gonna go back to the downloads folder and look for the auto runs folder that I created from here. Wherever you extracted these from is where they're going to be, and I have them right here. Inside the folder, I have all of these files. The only one we need to worry about is auto run 64.exe. We're going to right click on that and click run as administrator. And when it opens, this will be something like what you see, but you want to go into the options tab up here and uncheck everything here. Make sure you're seeing everything. Then go to scan options and make sure the top one is unchecked and the last three are checked. Then click rescan. I don't have to do that since it's already done. And then what you're going to do is, is you're going to scroll through all of this and this isn't going to take too long. But most importantly, if you see on this tab over here, this is the virus total tab. Now this is a top down view of everything installed in your system and everything in the registry. And on this tab, it's comparing every single thing on your system with virus total, which we viewed a little bit a while ago. It's comparing them with 70 plus antivirus scanners of the world, all the best in the game. And what you're looking for is a higher number than this. One out of 73, that's a false positive. You're looking for five or more. You want to look for a real detection. A real crypto miner will have double double digits. So it's not going to be a what if. 1 out of 74, 1 out of 73, those are not positives. And then you'll scan through all here. Now anything in pink, that's not a detection. Ignore the color codes here. Pink just means that it's not verified with Microsoft, but that's 7-zip. I know what it is. If you see anything that's in yellow, that just means the registry key goes to something that's no longer on the system. And so you're just looking for things that have like 40 out of 75, 20 out of 75, but one out of 75 is nothing. I know my system is clean, but I could go through all of here. You should go through all of here and look through here. If you see something that's red, you can click on it and it'll take you to virus total for that result. And it's saying Jing Min says that this is a Trojan, but everyone else here says it's fine. It's not a positive, it's a false positive. So you can go down through here and look at everything on the system. If you go through here and you see everything is fine and you don't have any high numbers, like more than five, then your system is clean. Great job, you're done. You can relax. And that's that. That's how you remove crypto miners. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you found it helpful and you like it, please click like and consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and X and I shall see you next time.